I was delighted to uh, have been asked to come and talk to you. It was a role, the, the recruitment role, certainly when I was at Tesco, it was the one in the team that was the most pivotal and closest to, to me in the way in which I worked. So to, to have the opportunity to talk to you today about what I think about the role um, was, was, uh, was great. So, in musical theatre, a performer who can sing, dance, and act to a really high standard is known to their fellow performers as a triple threat. Think of the skills of the performer needed in a show like The Wizard of Oz, and you'll know what I mean. Similarly, effective in-house recruitment leaders need to be total leaders, a triple threat of coach, strategist, and visionary. Or as I prefer to call them, a bias navigator, a proxy CEO, and a disruptor in chief. Let's start with a bias navigator, a critical capability in achieving fairness, equality, and inclusiveness in recruitment. Did you know that supermarkets sell more French wine when French music is playing and more German wine when German music is in the background? Did you also know that the NBA referees have been found to call out when white referees are playing more fouls on black players. And when black referees are playing, more fouls on white players. Or that scientists have been found to rate potential lab technicians lower and play to plan to pay them less if those potential technicians are female. And that doctors treat their patients differently if they're overweight. And we treat our doctors differently if they are overweight. Most importantly, did you know that all of these behaviours and many more happen when we don't even realise it? They're behaviours that demonstrate bias, and we've talked a lot about it today. And they're biases that are happening without us even knowing that they occur. I'd like to share with you a story that I heard recently. It's a story from the 13th century, and it's a fable about a guy called Nasruddin. Now, he was a, a Turkish ancient trickster. I don't know if you've heard this story, but it's, it's quite nice and, and quite good for us, really. So he was walking across, Nasruddin was walking across a border back to his country from a neighbouring one. As he walked, he was pulling a donkey on a rope. And on the donkey's back was a huge pile of straw. Now, when he got to the border, the border patrol guard knew all about Nasruddin, and he was aware of his reputation. So he obviously thought that Nasruddin was up to no good and was trying to smuggle something. So he said to him, look, what have you got on that in that straw, you've got something. And he said, I've got nothing, search me. So he said, well, I intend to. I can't do that kind of accent that they'd have. It's a bit East Endsy, but you'll just have to bear with me. So anyway, he gets out all the straw, he goes through it all, unpacks it all, only to find nothing. So frustratingly, he's got to let Nasruddin through. Now, this happened then a few days later. Nasruddin comes along with the donkey, another pile of straw, this time lots and lots of sticks in it, and the guard thinks I'm going to have him, stops him again and says, right, that's it, I'm going to unload all of that stuff again, goes through the whole thing, still absolutely nothing. Now, for the next few months, this same thing happened. Nasruddin, the same Nasruddin, would walk with his donkey with a pile of just worthless material and nothing valuable was ever found. Finally, one day, 
the border guide was completely frustrated with him and he said, look, today is my last day on this job. I've been watching you for months. I know you're up to something. It's got to the point where I can't sleep at night. Now, because it's my last day, you can tell me and I'm not going to do anything, but just give me peace of mind and tell me what you've been doing. Nasruddin said, I've been smuggling donkeys. <laughs> so, in our struggle for fairness, equality, and inclusiveness in recruitment, have we been looking in the right places, or have we just been looking in bundles of straw? Now, we know the business benefits of inclusion, and they've been talked about today, and they're clearly understood. Different backgrounds, perspectives, different thinking styles all add value. And this morning, um, Natalie spoke about it really eloquently. But what's less understood, or at least less widely acknowledged, is that most, if not all, of these benefits are rooted in biases. And if these biases aren't understood, then they spark off each other and devalue, um, uh, uh, yeah, and, and don't create value. So there was a study that I wanted to share, which was at Yale University. And it was an experiment that was taken to look at the role in hiring scientific staff and if there was any bias against gender. Now, in this study, 127 professors signed up to take part in this study. And all of them received a one-page summary, a candidate summary, which was identical. They were told that the candidate was described as performing, but not extraordinary. However, some of the applicants were called John, and some were called Jennifer. But all of the other aspects were identical. The results from those 127 professors was both fascinating and troubling in equal measure. When asked to evaluate the candidates on a scale of one to seven, with seven being the maximum, the average score for John was four. The average score for Jennifer was 3.3. John was not only the candidate most likely to be hired, but he was also the one that the professors said they were most willing to mentor. And when asked about the prospective starting salary, John was going to be awarded $30,000. The candidates that were called Jennifer were being offered on average $26,000. And perhaps most surprisingly of all is that the female professor responses showed no difference to their male counterparts. So we all have biases, and they are what makes us individual. But we need to be mindful of these because we know that they some have, uh, some, sometimes have unintended consequences. So, you know, if, in this room, put your hands up if you're right-handed. That's the majority of you. Now keep your hands up if you think that you have, uh, your, your company has ever discriminated against left-handed people. So put your hands up again if you're right-handed. Right. How many of you think that your company has discriminated against left-handed people? Well, I'll tell you, I'm a left-handed person, right? So I'm a lefty. How many lefties are out there? Not that many. Right. You can tell me. How many times have you tried to use a pair of scissors at work? Right? That's discrimination for you, I can tell you. you you'd have to be a left-handed person to understand that, but it's a nightmare. But that is a classic example of unconscious bias. Most people don't set out to discriminate, but our biases can blind us into the needs of others. So how do you mitigate that, and how do you understand about unconscious bias in recruitment? Now, a few things have been said today around blind recruitment. And over the years, there's been calls for it to put blind recruitment into your processes. In fact, I was at a think tank a few years ago with David Cameron where he was pleading with businesses to sign up and, and to make that happen. 
Um, and of course, we all know that, that if, you, um, if you have blind recruitment, then you're looking at removing things like gender, age, address, marital status, education, qualifications, the list goes on. However, as we saw with right-handed people, the list of things that we can unconsciously discriminate against is endless. So to truly eliminate bias, we would have to eliminate any sense of individuality from the application form. And yet, isn't it the individual that all of us want to hire? We want to be in a position where individuals can bring 100% of themselves into work, into the organization, and be the best they can be. So I would argue that in trying to eliminate those qualities which might trigger a bias, like Nesreddin's border guard, we've been focusing on the bundle of straw and overlooking the donkey. Wouldn't it be better if in-house recruitment teams enabled the hiring manager to get the best possible understanding of everything about a candidate and helped them then navigate and remove the barriers and that's why I'm really excited about emerging technologies, such as MeVe, which are enabling job seekers and employers to understand each other in a far more transparent way than ever before using video technology. As well as being quicker, easier, and cheaper than established recruitment methods, it also ensures that employers are able to get a better match to their vacancies based on personality and fit. However, it does require the relationship between the in-house recruitment teams and the hiring managers to change completely. With in-house recruiters acting as bias navigators, they must ensure that fairness, equality, and inclusiveness meets the business needs. But recruitment is a two-way street. Hiring managers need to select the right candidates, but those candidates need to ensure that you are the right organization for them to join. Which brings me on to the next role of the in-house recruitment leader, which is the proxy CEO. You need to carry the culture of the business. You need to carry its DNA and help candidates understand the unique ways of working and acting that make your business unique. The signs and the symbols, the traditions and the rituals, and the stories and the sayings, because every organization is unique. And if the culture is changing, as proxy CEO, you need to know and to be able to describe and articulate where the culture is now and where the culture is heading. You also need to be able to describe the strategy of the business in a way that is clear and compelling. We need candidates to be as excited as joining your business as your hiring managers are about welcoming them to the team. And to achieve both, you need to be able to tell the story of your organization to candidates with the same passion and the depth of understanding that your CEO does to potential shareholders. It's that important. How do you describe your business today are you excited or do you just talk about the role? Do you know the strategy? Do you understand where the culture's heading? Do you understand how people are rewarded? Do you understand how you can talk about your business in a way that your CEO does? Or do you even care? Because that's what every one of you should be doing and that's what every one of your teams should be able to articulate. And that level of understanding also opens up the opportunity to fulfill your final role, which is the disruptor in chief. I mentioned The Wizard of Oz earlier, and the making of that movie starring Julie Garland back in 1939 points to one of the ways in which in-house recruitment leaders can act as disruptors in chief. 
The Wizard of Oz is a landmark in the history of films. It was the last movie ever to be made under the so-called studio system in Hollywood. Every single person that worked on that film, the writers, the actors, the technicians, all of them worked under a contract to MGM. They were all company employees. Today, 80 years later, that business model has totally disappeared. For example, Eon Productions, who make the James Bond movie, have just a handful of permanent employees. The hundreds of people that you see listed in the closing credits are all freelance talent, all of them. It's taken a while, but this model is beginning to get more traction with more organizations using contractors hired for the duration of specific topics and projects. And more and more employees are enjoying the benefits and the flexibility offered by what's sometimes disparagingly called the gig economy. And to give you a sense of that gig economy, and it was mentioned very early on today with Kevin, 4.8 million workers in the UK now describe themselves as self-employed. That's 15%. If you think about the number of employees across the whole public sector, it's 5.3 million. So that just gives you some idea of the scale. And you know what? That gap is closing, and it's closing sharply. And it is supported by technology. So another question for you to really ask inside your own business, where is it heading, what are you doing, and have you got the technology to be able to support a different way of being able to work? Uber, and my favorite one, TaskRabbit, are great examples of this. But the trend is happening right across the workforce. With TaskRabbit, I don't know, has anybody used TaskRabbit? Yeah, fantastic. So you can get everything from cleaners to handyman, people that can put up a, uh, you know, a picture on the wall, whatever it might be. If you're having a party, they'll come around at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. You state what time you want, you state when you want them, where you want them, and then they'll tell you all of the different people that can fulfill your task and how much it will be. Fantastic. They log in when they come in, they log out when they go, and you pay them only what they've done. And you can give them feedback, and equally, they can give you feedback, a bit like the Uber model. The question is, how might these changes impact the employment model in your organization? It's just one of the questions that in-house recruitment leaders might ask when looking at the resourcing challenges and the opportunities faced by your businesses. By adopting that model of that chief disruptor, in, 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 by uh, adopting that mindset of disruptor in chief, you will increase the chances of finding new ways of accessing the talent your organization needs most. In an economy that's demanding greater speed and agility than ever before. And remember, if your organization isn't the one that's doing the disrupting, before too long, someone else is bound to come along and then disrupt you. So effective in-house recruitment leaders need to be total leaders. A triple threat of coach, strategist, and visionary, or bias navigator, proxy CEO, and disruptor in chief. It may not be the snappiest job title in town, but I believe it is such a pivotal role that can drive positive organizational change and help build better, more inclusive businesses for everyone. Thank you.